Good morning students. We can start our second chapter by telling a story. You must be wondering what kind of a story we are going to tell. It is the story of black pepper. I know that you are amazed thinking of that. What kind of a story does a pepper have? You should realize that even the black hole has a story to tell. The story goes like this. I am Pepper. Can I invite you to the Euro a few centuries ago? Nyan Kurumulag. No tandak Mumbula, Euro Pile Kadiamana, Nyan Parayanad. The rural fox in Europe would kill some of their cattle for meat and preserve it for the prolonged winter season. Masangal Ninda Nilkuna winter season Aram Bikina the Mumba. Avadate Karshagar, Avadate cattle Senekuna, Yrachiaki Suchikimairu. The heavy snowfall in the winter was not favorable for the grass to grow in the cattle fields. Both the people and cattle faced a shortage of food during the season. The solution for this was to preserve the cattle meat as food for winter. Winter season less snowfall karana cattle fields il pullugal mulachirunnilla. Idu food shortage in idayaki. Manusharkum cattle sinu oru pole bhakshanathinu shamam vannu. Cattle sinu konnu irachi aaki soochichana idinu pariharam kandathu. Remember that there was neither electricity nor refrigerator of any kind during that time. So they found me effective in preserving the meat and making it tastier. In short, I was inevitable for them. In the pole, electricity or refrigerator illa the kala mana. Irachi, Uribada kalam, keda guda de suchikanum, kuda del taste to getanum, enneana our obiosidanada. Churikatil, nyan avarka, uri atyavisha gadaga maidum. My friends, cardamom, cinnamon, and ginger. All spices like I am were also loved by them. The traders came in search of us from the time immemorial. Nyan Matra Malla, Namuda Natale, Elam, Karwa Pata, Inji, Enniveyum Aurku Praya Pata the Idunu. Nyangale Tedi, Pandu Mudale, Kachavadaka, Europil Nina Ethiru. Didn't you listen to the story of Pepper? What did you understand from the story? We understood that. The spices of our land were essential to the foreigners. The second thing is the traders all over the world used to visit here to collect spices. The two things we are understood from the story. You have understood the previous chapter about the conquest of Constantinople by the Turks in 1453. The situation necessitated the European traders to discover new sea routes to India. With the discovery of sea route to India, the Portuguese, Dutch, the English and the French reached India. With the discovery of sea route to India, many Europeans reached in India. The Europeans are first one Portuguese. And the second one is Dutch. Another European power, English. Then France. Portuguese, Dutch, English and French. They were reached in India. What were, what were their purpose? Their purpose to establish trade relation with India. Establish their aim was to establish trade relation with India. Trade relation. From this, we are going to discuss about Portuguese. Portuguese. In 1498, a group of sailors reached the car park near Calicut from Portugal under the leadership of Vasco da Gama. 1498, Vasco da Gama. 
1498, a group of sailors from Portugal. They reached the Carpat. They reached the Carpat. They reached the Carpat near Calicut. Under the leadership of Vasco da Gama. Then, their major aim was to establish the trade relation between India. Then, ruler of Calicut, ruler of Calicut is known as Samorins, did not provide trading facilities to Vasco da Gama. Ruler of Calicut, ruler of Calicut, they are also known as Zamorins. Zamorins. After Vasco da Gama, two sailors from Portugal reached India. They are Almeida. Almeida. One of the women is Almeida. And the another one is Albuca. Two sailors reached India, Almeida and Albuca. Uh, then next we are discussing about the major trade centers of Portuguese. The major trade centers of Portuguese, Goa and Daman and Diu. Daman and Diu. Goa and Daman and Diu were the major trade centers of Portuguese. Then the Portuguese constructed two forts in India. The two forts, they constructed two forts. The two forts are one is San Angelo, San Angelo Fort. San Angelo Fort. Then San Angelo Fort, Kanno. And the another one is Kotapuram Fort. Kotapuram Fort. Kotapuram Fort in Trishu. Portuguese constructed two forts. They are San Angelo Fort in Kannu, Kotapuram Fort in Trishu. Then the Portuguese were also known as Parangis. Parangis. Portuguese also known as Parangis. Next we are going to discuss about the impacts of Indo-Portuguese relationship. Impacts of impacts of Indo-Portuguese. In Portuguese relationship. In bags of Indo-Portuguese relationship. Many agricultural crops are introduced to Portuguese. The agricultural crops are pineapple, guava, cashew, red chili. Papaya, etc. Many agricultural crops, pineapple, guava, cashew, red chili, papaya were introduced with Portuguese. Then another one was the use of printing machine. Use of printing machine. Printing machine. Use of printing machine. Uh, then we already discussed about in the first chapter, printing machine. The printing machine created a new reading culture. It uh, created many changes, revolutionary changes in the world. Then it was the uh, impact of Indo-Portuguese relationship, use of printing machine. Then another one was the development of art form Chavitu Nadagam. Development of the art form Chavitu Nadagam. This was the 
Impacts of Indo-Portuguese relationship. First one was many agricultural crops uh, introduced in Kerala. They were pineapple, guava, cashew, red chili, papaya, etc. Then uh, use of printing machine. And the last one now, uh, and the last one is the development of the art form Chavitan Adagam. Then uh, the Portuguese could not establish many trade centers in India. Then what were the reasons behind this? Portuguese could not establish many trade centers in India. Then the reasons behind this, they did not have enough economic and military resources to compete with other European powers. They did not have enough economic and military economic and military resources to compete with the other European powers. And, uh, first point. Then uh, they faced resistance from native forces. They faced resistance from native forces. This was the reason Portuguese could not establish many trade centers in India. Then Kunyani Marakya, the admirals of Samorin's naval force led the resistance against the Portuguese in the Malabar region. Kunyali Marakya. Kunyali Marakya. Kunyali Marakya. Uh, he is the admirals. Admirals of Samorin's naval force. Samorin's naval force. Naval force. He led the resistance against the Portuguese in the Malabar region. That's all about Portuguese. Vasco da Gama got a profit which was 60 times greater than the cost of their voyage by selling the goods they took back with them. Then, the next European power we are going to discuss is the Dutch. Dutch. Dutch were another European force who reached India following the Portuguese. Then the major trade centers, the major trade centers of uh, Dutch were Kuchi and Kolla. Major trade centers. Major trade centers. Kochi and Kollam. Kochi and Kollam. Then Dutch governor. Dutch governor, his name is Van Reed. Dutch governor Van Reed completed the book Hortus Malabaricus. Dutch governor Van Reed. Dutch governor Van Rijn, he completed a book called Hortus Malabaricus. Hortus Malabaricus. Uh, he completed the book with the help of Itti Achudan Vaidya. Then the book was based with the medicinal plants of Kerala. Dutch governor, his name is, uh, Dutch governor, his name is, Van Reed. Van Reed. Van Reed is the Dutch governor. The Dutch governor Van Reed completed the book. The name is uh, Hortus Malabaricus. The book deals with the medicinal plants of Kerala. He completed, he completed the book with the help of Itti Achudan Vaidya. Itti Achudan Vaidya. Itti Achudan Vaidya. Itti Achudan Vaidya. Then, uh, the Dutch were defeated in the Battle of Kolachal in 1741. Dutch were defeated. Dutch were defeated in the Battle of Kolachal. Kolachal in, in the year 1741. 1741. Dutch were defeated battle name in the battle of Kolachal. The battle of Kolachal in 
1741. Then they lost their uh, uh, in that they lost their ground in India. Then the Dutch, the another name of Dutch uh, were known as the Lendens. Lendens. Then another European power who came to India is uh, they were Dutch. And uh, the major trade centers of Dutch were Kochi and Kollam. Uh, Dutch governor Van Riet completed the book Hortus Malabaricus. It deals, uh, it deals with the medicinal plants of Kerala. He completed with the help of Itti Achudan Vaidya. Then uh, they lost in their ground in India with the Battle of Kolachal in 1741. Uh, the Dutch were also known as Lendens. That's about the Dutch. Now we are dis going to discuss about the second last European power who reached India. They were the English. We are discussing about the European power who reached India. They were the English. English. Then English East India Company was formed in England on 1600. Their aim was to establish trade relation with India and China. English East India Company was formed in England in 1600. Then their major aim was to establish trade relation between India and China. India and China. Then, their first trade center in India was Surat in Gujarat. First trade center. Their first trade center, Surat in Gujarat. Then, the English also established the their trade centers at Bombay. Then the other trade centers of the English were Bombay. Bombay. Then Bombay. Already said that Mumbai. Then another one is Calcutta. Calcutta or Kolkata. Or Kolkata, then Madras, Madras or Chennai, this was the other trade centers of English, English East India Company established in England in 1600, then uh, their aim was to, their major aim was to establish trade relations between India and China. Their first trade center, Surat in Gujarat. Then they also established other trade centers. The trade centers were Bombay, Calcutta, Madras. This was about English. The next European power we are going to discuss is the French. Next step we are going to the European power French. French. Then the French East India Company was established in 1664. French East India Company established in 1664. Then, uh, like other European powers, uh, they, uh, the French reached in India for the trade relationship with India. Then, their uh, major aim was to establish their, uh, establish their trade with India. Then, the major trade centers of the French were 
Pondicherry. Major trade centers. Major trade centers. Major trade centers. Pondicherry. Pondicherry or Puducherry. Puducherry. Pondicherry or Puducherry. Then Mahi. Mahi. Karakal. Mahi Karakal is where the major trade centers of French. Then uh, their headquarters was Pondicherry. The headquarters of the French was Pondicherry. Pondicherry is the headquarters. Headquarters. Then, here we can see the picture of outline map of India. We can see different European trade centers in the map. Trade centers of Portuguese. Goa, Daman and Diu. Then, next we can see the trade centers of Dutch. Kochi and Kollam. Then, the trade centers of French, Pondicherry, Mahi and Karakel. Then the trade centers of English, main center, Surat in Gujarat. Then Madras, Bombay, Calcutta. Then let us revise the points. We started with the story of Pepper. From that story we can understood that the spices of our land were essential to the foreigners and the traders all over the world used to visit here to collect spices. Then we are moving to the Portuguese. Portuguese uh, uh, in 1498 a group of sailors reached Carpat near Calicut under the leadership of Vasco da Gama. And uh, their major aim was to establish their trade centers uh, and the ruler of Calicut, known as Zamorin. The ruler of uh, Calicut did not provide trading facilities to Vasco da Gama. Then he left to left for Kannur and gathered necessary goods and returned to Portugal. Uh, following Vasco da Gama, uh, two sailors reached the India, they were Almeida and Albuquerque. Their uh, aim was to uh, trade a relation with India. Then, uh, after that, we are discussing about the major trade centers of Portuguese. Goa, Daman, and Diu were the major trade centers of Portuguese. Then, they constructed two forts in uh, Kerala. They were uh, Saint Angelo Fort, Saint Angelo Fort in Kannur and Kottapuram Fort in Trishul. Then Portuguese were also known as Parangis. Then uh, we are discussing about the agricultural crops introduced by the Portuguese. The agricultural crops are pineapple, guava, uh, cashew, tobacco, papaya, etc. Uh, then uh, we are discussing about the Indo-Portuguese relationship. The Indo impact of Indo-Portuguese relationship. The impact of uh, Indo-Portuguese relationship, the use of printing machine and the agricultural crops and the uh, art form Chavitanadagam. Then the Portuguese could not establish many trade centers in Kerala. The reasons that uh, they did not have enough economic and military uh, resources to compete with other European powers and they faced resistance from native forces. Then Kunyali Marakyar, Kunyali Marakyar, the admirals of Zamorin's naval force led the resistance against the Portuguese in Malabar region. Then we are discussing about Dutch. Dutch were also called Lendens and uh, their major trade centers, major trade centers uh, Kochi and Kollam. Then uh, Hortus Malabaricus. Malabaricus, a book completed by the Dutch governor Van Rijn. Uh, 
with the help of itti and chudan vaidya then uh, the hortus malabaricus deals with the medicinal plants of kerala then dutch were uh, defeated defeated uh, the battle of kolachal in 1741 then they lost their ground in india then we are moving to uh, the english uh, english they are uh, formed uh, english east india company in uh, 1600 their aim was to establish trade relation with india and china then the first trade center of english was surat in gujarat many other trade centers established the uh, they were bombay calcutta and madras then we are going to the french the last european power the last european power uh, were the french the french east india company was established in 1664 they reached india for for the purpose of trade okay then uh, their major uh, headquarters headquarters puducherry ma pin another trade centers of french were mahi karyakram like always i am going to give an assignment for you draw the outline map of india and prepare a list of different european trade centers based on the map can you identify any common feature of these trade centers in which states do these centers presently situate once again draw the outline map of india and prepare a list of different european trade centers based on the map can you identify any common feature of these trade centers in which states do these centers presently situate thank you for all listening my class